Hello artists and welcome back to another video. I'm Thomas and today we're going to be going through five things that have really helped me kind of develop as an artist over the year, have helped me refine my practice and uh, yeah I wish I kind of knew some of these things sooner but some of them you learn as you kind of mature as an adult but um, yeah here's the uh, five things that you should really focus on as an artist. Number one is so ridiculously important it can literally define you succeeding or not succeeding and that is um, really looking at what you do every single day what kind of makes uh, takes up your time what systems have you built around you what how have you kind of controlled your environment around you everyone has somewhat some control over the environment around them you are is it is it as refined as you can make it for maximum efficiency and productivity when it comes to work. Small incremental changes each day can literally define how successful you are, how much work you're producing, uh, how much money you're making and so on and so on. As a young artist myself this is something I'm still trying to work out in my own context kind of we all have different advantages and disadvantages when it comes to our situations but um, I'm probably going to go more detailed, uh, do a kind of video completely dedicated to the systems I have around myself that I'm trying to develop and work on when it comes to my independent practice. So make sure, you're, make sure you subscribe if you're interested in hearing that at some point. Number two is really focusing and paying more attention to a particular subject or medium as soon as possible. I said this many, many times. Um, but one thing I realized I did sometimes was kind of become interested in one thing, do it a little bit, not really go that deep or try and, you know, master any aspects of that particular subject or medium or thing, then jump to another thing because, I don't know, I got bored with that particular thing, which is fine. But just know that if you keep doing that over a long period of time, you're just going to be really basic or mediocre at a lot of things and you're never going to be close to mastering really anything. So for my own practice, I've really just stuck. Like majority of my work is just 100% oil paint. I've stuck with oil paints as a medium and even painting style. I have uh, explored a few different things, but mainly I am focused on building this painting style, kind of a mix between abstraction and realism and finding that perfect tension between, I don't know, I guess abstract textures with oil paint versus more refined areas that you can kind of tell, uh, I guess, what I'm trying to represent. Number three is really learning how to present your work or even present yourself as an artist in a clean and professional way. This doesn't mean like perfect pictures for everything, but with all of us going around with a HD camera in our pocket, there's no more excuse, you know, on your phone. That's what I'm referring to. Um, there's no more excuse when it comes to uh, documentation of work or at least high quality documentation. But one thing that people don't think about is, you know, a small lighting setup, for example, can go such a long way when it comes to taking pictures of your work. The amount of uh, people I see posting on social media who are painters who are interested in promoting themselves, but the pictures they take are so kind of slapdash or mediocre and just having maybe just even some household lights just to add a little bit of lighting or just you know studying a bit of composition when it comes to photography or making their posts more interesting would do so much more for them as an artist and um, kind of having a collection of that over time really shows how kind of uh, it would really communicate your practice as an artist in a far more effective way than just taking a slapdash photo and just putting it on Instagram. Point number three feeds into point number four now, and that is to really look towards the, the internet's the future, guys. If you're not chasing an audience on the internet, then you're gonna be left behind. Study how already successful artists are marketing themselves on social media. Everyone is doing it. There's, there's so many different ways to do something. Just because you see one person doing one thing one way and you don't like that, doesn't mean you have to do it in the same way. There are going to be people in the, say, art community which are going to be promoting their work in ways that you disapprove of. And others are going to be promoting themselves in a way that you feel like could fit your personality or style. Whether that be video, audio, pictures, whatever it is they're talking about or creating, have a look at those who are doing well already 
and copy. Copy their format. Don't copy their work, <laughs> copy their format. Your job is really to go out there and try and find the people who are gonna be interested in supporting you as an artist and also for you to prov be providing value to them as an artist. Always be trying to look out for underpriced attention, whether that be Instagram ads, Facebook ads, uh, looking at researching kind of uh, influencer influencer promotions. I don't like using the word influencer because I don't know, it has, I feel like it has a negative connotation within the internet world, but let's just say art accounts that are doing well in the social media world who are promoting other people's works, have a look, have a look at the prices. But the key point I'm trying to get across here is you really need to produce social media content at scale, as, as, as much of a scale as you can manage as an individual. And that will be small at first, but it can get much bigger as you get better at doing it. I've done more videos expanding on this point and I'm starting to document my own kind of marketing journey as an entrepreneur. Um, and uh, yeah, so that, that was a comment from one of my videos in the marketing playlist, but there's a marketing playlist on my homepage of my channel. So check that out if you're interested. The final point is a simple one, but sometimes if you just understand the simple things, your perspective, it won't be warped when it comes to life. And that is patience. Yes, you've heard it all before a million times, but sometimes we actually have to just think back, think back, sit back and think um, when it comes to these basic concepts. But realize that success really doesn't come overnight. Uh, many, many successful people, regardless of what their narratives are or what other people might say about them, um, there's a lot of hard work gone that has been put in beforehand up to the point where they seem to just appear out of nowhere successful, but it's not the case. The amount of work it takes to get to that point is a lot. So you kind of need to really just stay patient, work hard, refine your systems, refine your practice, try and increase the value of what you're trying to provide to whoever your audience or customers are, and eventually you will get there. The moment you tell yourself that you're not good enough is the moment you've given up that point of success and you will never reach it if you just constantly kind of fall into that pit of despair that the independent artist might do so sometimes. I hope that these five points are somewhat useful to um, anyone watching and uh, yeah, just drop me a DM on Instagram if you have any questions or you can comment in the comment section below. And as always, here is my awkward goodbye.